Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, and today I have another comparison video for you comparing the Chicago White Sox of 2020 to the 2020 Texas Ranger squad, the way they look. Now, again, the reason that I do these comparison videos is because even to teams in the West and teams in the East, and I'm even going to do it to the National League teams that we play, because we play those teams, and you want to be able to, you know, see how we match up against the competition that we can be expected to play in 2020. So, again, now, if you've seen any of my previous videos, you know I've gone over the White Sox, and, um, you know, so right here we've got their lineup. You got the usual, um, you know, the usual guys like Abreu um, at uh, first base, the newly signed Encarnacion at DH, Lewis Robert, who we just locked up to a nice contract, is going to play in center field. You've got um, Mendick, who's going to be at second base until Mandrigal comes up, um, because Mandrigal may not actually make the club until um, his free agency clock won't start running for 2020. That's possible. I don't know that for sure that that's what the White Sox will do. But even if they don't, then Mendick would be just a backup infielder. Um, you've got um, the, uh, the uh, trade that we brought over Mazzara. So we've got Mazzara in right field. Um, of course, you have Jimenez and... Um, um, Mancata also. Mancata playing third and Jimenez will be in left field. Um, Jimenez coming off a year where he hit 261 but had 31 home runs in his rookie campaign. And um, Mancata having broken out last year and hopefully he can continue that um, an upward trajectory uh, from that. And um, you've got uh, Anderson at shortstop, Timmy Anderson, so hopefully he can also, he had kind of a breakout year in 2019, and hopefully he can build on that as well in 2020. And then you've got the rotation headed by Giolito, who again seems to have broken out, had a breakout year in 2019. Hopefully these guys, these breakout seasons are just a prelude to more things to come and not, you know, a great year that they had in the middle of uh, you know a lot of mediocre years so hopefully they all build on this and keep moving forward so you got Giolito and then of course we went out and, and uh, signed Keichel and we signed Gio Gonzalez and then you've got Lopez coming back he may be in the rotation he could even possibly be in the bullpen it depends on Kopech and uh, Cease. Cease will probably start the year or be expected to start the year in the rotation with um, Kopech potentially in the rotation, maybe in place of, uh, of uh, Lopez, or he could um, start the year in the bullpen on the big club, or he could even start the year in the minors because the White Sox can afford to wait with him and bring him along slowly since they do have good pitching now uh, that they went out and signed uh, Keichel and Gonzalez and also got went out and signed Ciszek for their bullpen and then of course the bullpen you also have Jimmy Cordero you have um, Evan Marshall out there um, you've got uh, Herrera so we got a, a pretty solid bullpen and a pretty so, uh, solid rotation, I think. Um, certainly solid enough that uh, this lineup should be able to score enough runs to win a lot of games for the Sox. And then, of course, on the bench, the big guy you've got on the bench is Lurie Garcia, super utility guy, can play the outfield, can play the infield. You're also going to have... Um, uh, Adam Engel out there, an outfielder, great defensive outfielder, still needs to bring his hitting along a little bit, but defensively, he is a superb defensive outfielder. Um, and then, of course, McCann, who could give uh, 
could give, uh, oh, man, uh, Grand Doll some days off at Catcher, and that'll afford uh, resting time for Grand Doll, who we also signed in the off season to a three-year contract. So, I mean, the Sox are stocked. They're stocked, and they've got good guys in there. Still got a lot of good players down in their um, in their minor league system. We got Vaughn, who's maybe a year or two, still another year or two away. Um, but yeah, I mean the cupboard is the cupboard is stocked, and um, and that also things like that will allow us to possibly bring Kopech along slowly. But when he's ready and we have a spot for him, or if injuries necessitate it, we can bring Kopech up and put him in the uh, put him either in the bullpen or in the rotation wherever he's best suited at the time, and whatever best suits the White Sox to do with him. So now that takes us to the Texas Rangers. So now you got the Texas Rangers. Um, this is how they would line up. You've got Sinshu Chu at DH. Uh, he only hit about 260 something last year, but he had 21 home runs, I think. I think it was 21 home runs. And he gets on base. The guy can walk. He had like a 371 on base percentage. You got Elvis Andrus at shortstop. Um, he had, I think, 20-something home runs also. Gallo had an injury. Uh, Joey Gallo had an injury-plagued year last year, but in like 241 at-bats, he hit 21 home runs. And what makes him really dangerous is he used to only hit in the low 200s. He always used to hit like 205, 210, 208. But last year he hit 254. I think he's got a new approach at the plate, and so now he's a little more dangerous because now he can hit and hit for that same kind of power. You got Santana in right, um, Willie Calhoun, who's finally cleaned up his act and started to take uh, playing in the majors seriously, and um, and it shows he had a good year last year. The Todd father, Todd Frazier, will be at third base. Um, he hit about 251, his usual thing, 251 with uh, 21 homers. He can still he can still hit the homer every once in a while. Uh, Roughnet or Odor at second base. Odor is like the old Joey Gallo. He doesn't hit for a very high average. I think last year he hit about 205, but he had 30 homers. Uh, then you got Shinieros at catcher and Ronald Guzman at first base. So this is a this is a pretty decent lineup if it stays healthy. Um, it's a good run scoring lineup. They do get on base. They have their guys that can get on base and they can hit some home runs too, um, especially with Odor and Gallo out there. Uh, the rotation now they went out and they got Corey Kluber for the rotation. Last year he was injured for a lot of the year and he only pitched about 36 innings and had a 569 earned run average or something. But you know if Corey Kluber's uh, healthy, the man is good. And then you got uh, Mike Miner who had a pretty good year last year, 369, 350 something earned run average. Same thing with Lynn, Lynn was about a 360 something earned run average. Uh, you got Kyle Gibson, who came over from the Twins. Now, Kyle Gibson last year didn't have a very good year, but I think the year before that, he did have a pretty good year. So, Gibson's got potential. Um, we'll just have to see which one shows up this year. And then in their fifth spot, they project to have Jordan Lyles, who's kind of a journeyman. He's bounced back and forth between the bullpen and the uh, starting rotation on the teams he's been on, which include Pittsburgh and San Diego and Houston, I believe he was on at one point. So the bench um, is pretty, you know, pretty vanilla. You've got um, Kiner Falefa out there who's kind of a utility guy. He can catch a little bit and he can play a little bit of infield and outfield. You got Jeff Mathis at catcher, who has been around for decades, it seems. The guy is a great defensive catcher. Can, he's got a great arm. He can throw people out. Um, can frame pitches. He can do everything defensively that you want of a catcher. He just can't hit. And uh, so then in the bullpen, you got Jose Leclerc, uh, Jesse Chavez, 
um, Montero, uh, Brett Martin. Brett Martin is one of their young guys, I think, uh, just made an appearance last year, so he's coming along. Uh, you got Nick Goody out there, Edison Volquez. So this bullpen is really not that good. Um, uh, very few of these guys have good reliever type ERAs that you would want to see a relief pitcher have. So they're going to have their issues out in the bullpen, I think. Um, and Chavez has been a guy who's gone back and forth between the pen and the starting rotation. Um, so now that brings us to the game dates against Texas. Uh, we will play Texas 416 through 419 in Chicago. And then we only play them uh, on 7-4 and 7-5 in Texas. So I guess what's going on is that the White Sox will play most of their home games against, um, or most of the games against the West will be at home, and most of the games against the teams in the East will be on the road. It looks like that's how it's shaping up right now. Not sure, don't quote me on that, but anyway, these are the dates that we do play Texas. And so that's what I got for the Texas Rangers. So they, um, they're, they're a decent team. I don't think they're gonna really, I don't see them giving us any real trouble, but they are a team that, um, they're a team to kind of be, to look out for. I mean, they, they, they're they certainly not going to be a pushover, not like some of the other teams like the Orioles. So, um, and especially, you know, in, uh, uh, you know, on those dates in Texas when it's going to be really hot and humid. So we'll have to see how that goes. But yeah, they've, they've got a solid lineup. They got Okay starting pitch. Pretty good starting pitching, especially with Kluber at the top. And then they got a bullpen that's kind of weak. Um, and a bench that's you know, nobody really notable on the bench. So that's how we stack up against those guys. Um, but i like to hear what you guys think. Um, you think Texas is a team that could be dangerous next year? Do you think they're uh, you know, lying in the weeds and they're a team that we're going to have to watch out for. Um, anybody, any sleepers out there, you know, that you think are going to turn around and have great years for Texas. Uh, so yeah, be interested to hear your thoughts on the, uh, on the Sox versus Texas matchup next year. But for right now, it's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.